got $150 from Nacho Bar. Here's to another great AGDQ and to kicking cancer's butt. Here's a shout out to my boy Ward and the crew I met at AGDQ and MAGFest last year. $20 from Andrea Ritsu. Got to donate for my fellow Swedes during the Swede block. Thank you for a great marathon so far. Lika till Alihop. I hope I said that right. People continue to throw Swedish at me here. $20 from Bald Nate, who says, Good luck to both Andy and Dexter on the race. If either sets a world record during the race, I'll donate an extra $100. Well, I think your $100 is safe, but that was still a fabulous race. $5 from Chrissy, who says, Good luck with the races, Andy, Dexter, and Angry Lanks. Oh, hey, Andy, remember, if you get sub 10, I'll shoot in $30 more. Andy, world record hype. $5 from Irregular Ginny. Tiena, Tiena. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's supposed to be hey, hey. Just wanted to wish everyone more luck at the event. Happy to see my fellow Svenska brothers have arrived safely to the American shore. Shout outs to all the homies attending. Thought I saw Duckfist there. Wink. I've got something to say, and if uh, the host can read this, I will donate another five later. Oh, my goodness. Both the runners can be the judge. Hopefully, it gets read during or before the race. Sorry about that. Okay, here we go. Yag Harbara En Sak Osaga Kilar Yag Or Batman. I'm very sorry for that. Money goes to the winner's choice. I believe that's Dexter. Best of luck to my fellow Swedes. Love, Ginny. We'll make sure we... Uh, get the runner's choices for those donations. Got $30 from Caddy Wumpus. Oh man, gotta get me a look in that sketchbook. Yeah, we'll see if we can get the sketchbook up on uh, one of the gift show off segments so you can get a look at some of the other images in it. Also put this toward the setup block two bonus game which you know is Superman 64. I might be asleep for it, but I'll be catching the recording later. Great event, great cause. Thanks for everyone's hard work on screen and off. And that's a good reminder. There really are so many people involved in putting this event on, from hotel staff to all the GDQ staff and volunteers that you really don't get to see on screen. And uh, it's great to be a part of it. I love volunteering for this, this event. Myself, it takes a lot of love uh, to put this event on. Got $10 from Lord Hayati, who says, Hello, GDQ. I'm donating for Pimple in the Battletoads arcade bid war because PJ needs his poor life choices. If PJ manages to crash the stream, I'll donate $10. Because <laughs> odd things tend to happen with him. He's also useful for when Skynet happens, I hear. I hope we never have to find that out. And as you can see, just disappeared off screen. We have a new prize available. It is just $5 that you need to donate to be eligible to win those awesome Chippendale Perler magnets you just saw. And uh, those won't be available for very long. Uh, so get your money in now. Like I said before, if you can afford five bucks for a coffee or a sandwich, you can afford to donate five bucks to HDQ. We've also, as that uh, other donator kindly reminded us, we've got a $30 donation. We'll put you in the running for a AGDQ 2018 sketchbook by LLK, the fabulous LLK. We've also got uh, a horror AGDQ banner, which I believe is also by LLK, which will require a $50 donation. And an original NES with EverDrive N8 for all you NES runners or aspiring runners out there, and that's a $20 donation will get you in the running for that.
And remember, when you are making your donations, don't forget you can assign a couple different things. You can choose to be entered into any of the available prizes, so don't miss that. It's a little ways down the page on your donation page. And then also, you can put the money towards any of our bid races or incentives. Right now, we've got that Battletoads uh, choice of Toad for Battletoads Arcade. Oh my goodness, I've got an update here. Pimple is still in the lead with $874, but Zitz has continued to keep pace. $802 for Zitz, so just $72, $72 behind. So you are still in control of which Toad PJ is going to be running with. We've also got that mammoth incentive to meet uh, for our bonus game, Superman 64. Um, it's a $30,000 uh, incentive that we need to meet. We've already got $11,000 met, but we need to get money in there. So if you don't know where to put your money, dump it towards that. That's another thing. You can just, uh, when you're making your donation, just down at the bottom of the page, you'll see a, a place to select which incentive you want to put your money toward. And there's a lot of good things to put in there. So ch make sure to check those out when you're making your donations. I've got $10 from Jonathan who says, I'm sick, grumpy, and getting ready for work. And that Batman run put a huge smile on my face. Thanks, guys. This is just what I need, a little Sonic the Hedgehog Green Hill Zone in my life right now. Got a couple of people whistling along in the audience. That's fine. I'm getting the word uh, from our production staff that I think this Chippendale race is just about ready to kick off between Andy and Angry Lanx. So let's send it over to the couch one more time. Here we go, guys. All right. Before we get started, I just wanted to, uh, there was originally going to be another entrant from uh, the old nation of Italy um, called, named Garadas. He unfortunately couldn't make it, but he had a message to you guys and to everyone. To all my speed friends, I was supposed to race with you, but I really couldn't make it, despite trying hard two times. I really wanted to be with you today, but sometimes bad things happen. This is not over, though. I will fix everything and will be there once again for AGDQ 2019. Good luck in the race from your favorite Spaghetti Mon. Yeah, we miss you, man. All right, but here we have um, Endy and Angry Lynx going at uh, Chippendale. Endy with a 9.54, and Lynx with a 9.59, is it? Okay, 9.59. Um, so, yep, if you guys are all set, uh, we'll get started with the countdown. Ready? All right. Three, two, one, go. All right, so actually, believe it or not, this sc first screen is one of the most kind of hectic in the game, or at least kind of the scariest, just because um, you take a couple damage boosts, and yet there's no checkpoint until the second area. These vertical sections are very important. You can see, actually, Lanx lost a bit of time there. Um, and those actually, because for all the kind of just straight right, straight left motion there is throughout this game. When you're taking these vertical sections, you can speed it up or slow it down a lot, just depending on how quickly you're mashing these jumps. Um, so you can see that there's these damage boosts coming up. Um, if they did not take that damage, they'd have to hesitate for a moment, just because there's no way to otherwise get around these sparks and mice. Um, so they're down to one heart now. But they did get through the first, uh, the very first room. Otherwise, it's not too uh, bad in this stage until the final boss. Um, you have to do a little puzzle. Oh, and he executed the puzzle. Per oh, and Link's right behind him with the puzzle. <laughs> so they're coming into this final boss, or the stage one boss. It's pretty simple. Um, <laughs> the, the stage one boss, uh, they really just need to get in five hits while dodging the um, electric. You can always kind of uh, work your way into reacting to not take a hit. There are eight stages total in an any percent run. Um, in stage two, one of the big concerns is the bees coming up. Uh, they're, I guess, like hornets. Um, there's a bit of luck to when they spawn, 
but you can you can control them to some degree, and also uh, you can usually react. A worst case scenario, you may need to slow down just a little bit. Before that. Um, they're going to be kind of working with these faucets. They need to jump up and down on them. And if for the ones on the actual level along the ledge, they can actually just walk off and back on them to uh, save a bit of time there. Um, but that's just one more kind of instance where just kind of tap and jump as, much, as quickly as possible can save you some time. So, so far, the Hornet luck isn't so bad. Uh, Endy kind of got a dangerous spawn there, but he knew how to react. Uh, Lynx got a very similar one. So, yeah, heading into uh, the Stage 2 boss, which is actually one of the biggest time savers. Now, there are four different places where this boss can appear. Um, ideally, uh, the worst case is he's up at the top, which Andy got. Um, best case is it's uh, the one of the bottom two, and all right. So Andy, Andy gets a, gets a decent kill, um, and uh, Lynx is right behind, and he gets gets the kill off screen. So you don't even see the boss come back. So Andy, I, th I mean, uh, Lynx made just a bit of time up there on Andy, uh, and he'll continue continue to need uh, to make up that time. Um, in stage three. We just we a big part of it is just kind of taking damage boosts off of these uh, these jack in the boxes. Um, you can save a bit of time there. I wonder. Okay, so they're both they're both uh, saving it out there, um, and it's just to kind of taking damage off of them. Also, at the end of the screen, this screen is pretty safe, the one that Andy's on now. But uh, towards the end, there's a, some dangerous maneuvers and damage boosts. Um, in order to kind of take damages as optimally as possible. So you'll see here that Andy hits, hits the off swi on switch and then takes that damage. And Lynx, I'm sure, will be doing it very soon as well. Uh, yep, and then followed up by a quick da uh, damage boost on the Jack in the Box. So L or Lynx is right there as well. Um, so we're not actually far off from the Stage 3 boss already. Uh, what we're hoping for here is for the boss to come out of the wall as far as possible so that you can just constantly damage him with that ball. If he's closer to the, uh, to the edge of the screen, which he just did to Endy, um, uh, then you, Endy has to play it so safe because he only has one hit left and he's getting some garbage luck. Uh, Langston gets some great luck himself, but he was able to dodge the balls, so he definitely saved some time there on, on Andy. So Lynx made up quite a bit of time there. That was stage three. We're coming up in stage four, which for me is one of my most fearful stages in the game. Uh, you can take damage boosts if you want. It's up to the players. It gets pretty risky. Uh, Andy, Andy unfortunately did not get that one. He gets boosted in the wrong direction. Lynx uh, getting hit by the same thing. Um, the rest of the screen is pretty simple, but then the uh, next screen can be optimi optimized quite a bit. So what they're going to be trying to do is they want to jump as high as possible all the time so that they can scroll the next kind of platform out or, uh, onto the screen earlier. So that, oh no, uh, Lynx takes a death there. Um, yeah, it's very difficult. If you may miss one jump, you can very easily just die. There's no boss to this screen, to this stage, so uh, Endy's moving right along. Lank's not far behind. Unfortunately, that death did cost him quite a bit of time. Stage five is, uh, truthfully, the, probably the simplest stage in the game. Um, and actually, now would be a great time for donations if we have any. We definitely do. I've got $15 from Boney, who says, Chip and Dale, I used to play that a lot with my siblings when we were small. So much nostalgia. Let's put the money towards this special N64 quote-unquote game. We've got $100 from Fesh, who says, Hello, everybody. So glad to see HDQ again one more year. One of the very best gaming events of all time. Love from Argentina. Love right back at you from the USA. We can fit in a couple more. Okay. We've got $200 from Amphibicopter. Yo, we are naming that horse Buddy because that's my buddy. Dying of sweat over here in Tokyo. Thanks for the games. All right, thank you so much. Um, so coming up on the stage five boss, it's pretty simple. Um, it's just going to be this kind of cat, bo cat boss. But as long as you position yourself just right, as ND has done, um, you won't get hit by anything. It's really the simplest boss in the game. So um, Link's coming up close behind. Now in stage six, stage six is another very, very hectic level. It's really kind of the even numbered stages in this game, which, uh, which are the hardest. Um, stage six is very hard. At the start, um, it's just kind of a sequence of pl uh, type platforming as well as 
um, just crabs and enemies that are in your way. But really the kind of meat and potatoes of this stage is the vertical section that comes on early on. Uh, it's not only, like, I talked a little bit in stage one about how vertical sections, you can save and lose so much time on it. But that's especially true here, because not only are you trying to do these uh, very precise A pushes that ju just to jump rapidly, you're also dodging things left and right, picking up boxes, but that was honestly an insane uh, vertical section from Andy. Nice job, Andy. Link's about to execute it as well. Uh, I'm really, honestly, watching Link's screen right now, because uh, there, there's... A little slip up there, unfortunately. It's just like every single, there's so many button in inputs in a, in a row there, but nice job from uh, Lynx as well. <laughs> Fortunately, they get a bit of respite here. There's no uh, boss in stage six, so they can move right on to stage seven. Um, stage seven is interesting because, uh, so I run the co just to briefly say, I, uh, I run the co-op uh, run of this game, or I used to, and the main points where this co-op run uh, saves time is here in stage seven and a bit in stage two. The reason is because of the uh, fans here. You can see that uh, one player just has to kind of walk slowly against a fan. I think there's three of them in the stage. And whereas in a two-player run, um, you can actually use death abuse quite a bit in order to uh, save some time and just kind of scroll past the fans. It's really interesting, and this is a great co-op game if, uh, if anyone's looking to just kind of look for a fun co-op speedrun. Um, but yeah, otherwise stage seven is pretty simple. Uh, you can't jump over those, I guess, uh, pelicans. So on what you can do is just kind of damage boost off of them when you need to, unless you can throw a box at them, which they've uh, done quite well. Uh, it's also the second appearance of Zipper, this uh, fly here. I hope uh, if any of you used to watch the cartoon, Disney Afternoon, am I right, folks? That, uh, <laughs> that uh, Zipper makes his appearance. You also saw Monterey Jack and Gadget. Uh, and you'll be seeing uh, the final villain, you know his name, coming up here. This boss is a lot of fun, and you can, you can save or lose a lot of time. Um, so Andy gets the quick kill there. What you really want to do, what you really want to do for that boss is make sure that after he walks off the right side of the screen, uh, you start damaging him three times on the left side, and then uh, okay. So so Lynx gets the first piece as well, and then he follows it up with uh, two two hits. Nice job. <laughs> Stage eight, I would say the hardest in the game. Um, it is just full of enemies, and the music agrees with me because that's some badass music. Um, so there is just kind of constant going, constant ongoing stuff, especially in the second area where there's these axe boosts coming up. There's a lot of damage boosts, and you need to do them so carefully. Actually, it's the kind of the biggest mistake that Endy made in his speed in his uh, world record. Um, but if you do these just right, you can kind of skip through a couple of them to save quite a bit of time, and and Endy uh, executes it really well. Um, but that means that he only has one heart left for a little bit here. Uh, so let's watch Lenks kind of executing these uh, axe damage boosts. Gets the first one, and now he's uh, looking at the second one. He gets that as well. Nice job. Um, so, so Endy already coming up on the final boss here. He has two hearts to work with. Fat Cat can get, uh, you can get unlucky at Fat Cat where he kind of uh, throws a cigar ash down on you a couple times, but we're hoping that he only does that at most once. But Andy gets solid luck. That's that's the that's the uh, time for Andy. Nice job. Legs following it up as well. He he as well has a uh, one heart worth of safety to work with if he needs to. Let's see how Fat Cat deals with him. Oh 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 no. Oh, Andy uh, Lynx unfortunately takes a death. Uh, has to restart. Fat Cat has all the more health to work work with. Getting that uh, wall power up. <laughs> Nice. Lynx finishes as well. <laughs> All right, guys. I got some killer times to report for you here. Andy with a 10.05 and Lynx with a 10.31. Nice job to both of you. Again, like a while ago, sub 10. A while ago, sub 10 was uh, just like the goal. And I was so awesome that these that these guys were able to pull off such great runs. Andy with so close to a 10, actually. Um, yeah, really solid run, guys. Really great race. All right. Well, thanks to both the racers. Congrats to Andy. And thanks to, again to Blecky for that fabulous uh, commentary. I've got a dramatic... Uh, development in the Battletoads Toad Choice race.
to report.